So today I want to talk about resonance and it's a part of the A-level physics syllabus. So before you watch this video, I strongly suggest you watch the previous videos I did on simple harmonic motion, the energy and the damping of simple harmonic motion because it will help a lot with this video. So resonance is when an oscillating system is forced to vibrate at the same rate as its natural frequency and when its amplitude of vibration increases rapidly to its maximum frequency because of it. So what does that mean? Well, if we have an oscillating system, just like this example that I use a lot, we have a spring attached to mass, we displace it to one side, we let it go and it starts oscillating back and forth. This oscillating system, let's say we have maybe like a hand pushing it. Um, it's going to vibrate at its natural frequency. But what if the hand pushed it at the same rate as its natural frequency? Well, then the, the amplitude of the motion would increase greatly because your hand is adding a force at the same time that its natural frequency is moving, which means it's not opposing the force. For example, if your hand pushed here, while actually the natural frequency was just to go here, then you guys will cancel out and the effect would not be good. But if it was the same rate as this oscillation that it would do naturally, it would add together and it would create a much bigger oscillation. So that's basically what it means. It's forced to vibrate at the same rate as its natural frequency and its amplitude of vibration will increase rapidly to its maximum, the highest. Oh, this is not a frequency, it's actually amplitude. It will rep increase rapidly to its highest amplitude because of the fact that you're pushing it here. So if the driving frequency, which is basically the hand in this case, whatever frequency is the force, the forcing frequency, um, and it's important to tell the difference between natural frequency and forcing frequency. And you could check another video I made on that. But if the driving frequency is not quite the same as the natural frequency, then the oscillations will still increase, just not to a greater extent. Which means that if there was a slight difference between the frequency of this and the frequency that the hand gives the energy at, or the force at, then sometimes the forces will cancel out because it's not exactly the same, which means it will decrease the amount that it can actually go to, the amplitude that it can go to. The energy is absorbed from the driver to the system. The hand is the driver and this is the system. So as you give these, um, the force, it's going to increase the amount of amplitude that goes on, which also means that it's going to increase the potential and the kinetic energy. Why is that so? Because, well, if you your amplitude is bigger, that means you have a greater distance to do your acceleration, which eventually makes your maximum kinetic energy much bigger. If this is oscillating at, to a greater maximum position, then the spring is going to be compressed even more, which is going to give it a much higher potential energy. So you could say that this is kind of like the chemical energy of the hand muscles that is given to this through kinetic energy, I guess, because you push the hand, it's going to increase the amount of energy, both kinetic and potential, that is in this system. So this is how we can represent it. Um, let's say that this is the driving frequency. So you have maybe like, you know, one hertz over here. 3 hertz over here, 5 hertz over here. So we increase it and this amplitude of this thing, so basically how far it moves here and back, is slow at first, first and it goes really really high and then as it becomes much higher, the amplitude will just decrease. So the highest point on this graph is obviously the maximum amplitude, which is when the resonance happens. It means that the driving frequency is equal to the natural frequency, which we, by that we can conclude that this point will give us the natural frequency. So we conclude that 3 hertz is a natural frequency. So for body in resonance, um, its natural frequency is equal to the frequency of the driver. 
its amplitude is at its maximum and it absorbs the greatest possible energy from the driver. Here's an example of resonance. Um, I think this is in England or something. Well, basically there was wind and this bridge basically oscillated. The people inside it also oscillated together with it at the same frequency that the bridge was oscillating due to the wind. All of the people in on top of the bridge added to the oscillations at the same frequency, which made the bridge oscillate to a very, very big extent. You would not believe that simple wind could oscillate the bridge so much. And yeah, you're right. It's not the wind. It was basically the people that were oscillating at the same frequency as the bridge that added to the amplitude of the bridge's oscillations. So apparently it was shut down and then it was inspected for a couple of years and then now it's back again. So with that bridge example, I've just proven that resonance can sometimes be a very bad thing. It can be a very um, useless thing or sometimes even dangerous. And so we need some way to be able to decrease the amount of resonance. And how the engineers handled it for that bridge that I talked about is that they added certain objects to the system that would assist to dampen the oscillations. So we talked about damping before. And now we're going to talk about how it interacts with resonance. So we can use damping to reduce the damaging effects of resonance. The degree of damping will increase the amplitude. Oh, as the degree of the damping increases, the amplitude of the oscillations in resonance will decrease, which means when damping increases, the amplitude will decrease. Um, the resonance peak would broaden, which means the maximum is not uh, the maximum is not close to just a very little amount of of frequency but the maximum will actually be close to a lot of different frequencies that are near it maybe maybe this is the maximum frequency we have 3 hertz and this the amplitude is going to be like 3 cm when it's 4 hertz it's going to be like maybe like 2.9 cm, which is much smaller, but this is going to be uh, maybe 6 cm, and then when it's 4 hertz, it's going to decrease to like 5 cm. So this is what I'm talking about. When the peak broadens, it means that the amplitude and the maximum amplitude, it's going to have a lot of very similar amplitudes around that area. The last thing is that the resonance peak broadens and the resonance frequency will also decrease. So if we can see this, we can see the maximum frequency. It's not very perfect here, but let's just assume that is the maximum frequency. We plot a, a line through it and we can see that it's actually going inside, which means the resonance frequency, the frequency at which resonance happens. And this is very, very slight, but we can represent it like that. It's decreasing. It's decreasing in this direction. It's, so we can see that the frequency will become lower at the point where resonance happens, the resonance peak would broaden and the amplitude will decrease. So that is something very important to take notice of. This one, which has the highest amplitude, the most narrow peak and the highest resonance frequency has no damping. This has light damping and this has the broadest peak, the lowest amplitude and also the lowest resonance frequency and that has heavy damping. So this is the graph between amplitude and the driving frequency. So now I'm going to use a door as an example and when this door right here, let's say this has no door frame or door hinge or whatever and it keeps just swinging back and forth, it's one of those doors, um, when it's let go it must not you know close back too slowly because that's obviously not going to be convenient but at the same time you can't just let it swing back and forth and back and forth about the door frame continuously because that's going to be noisy. So basically, what we do to make sure that this closes in the best way is we use critical damping. And what critical damping is, is it is the minimum amount of damping required to return an oscillating object to its equilibrium position without oscillating. So you can have so much damping that you actually just, for example, if you have an oscillating object, you can literally just make it, let's say it was like that, 
you could literally just return it without damping obviously if you put more damping it's going to take much longer so basically it's the minimum amount of the damping to just return it without ever oscillating so this is how it works um we have the amplitude here and this is basically the oscillation that's very very well recognizable of an object that is under damped so it, it's obviously going through an exponential decay of oscillations however if you critically damp it this is the blue line over here you can see that the amplitude decreases without ever even oscillating once so you require quite a lot of damping for that but if you put too much damping you can see that it actually closes at a much slower rate and that is when we say that it is over damped so we can divide it into three um, three things critically damped is just right then under damping which is basically you don't damp it enough so that it's less than critically damped and it starts oscillating it leads to unwanted oscillations when you over damp it you have a slower return to equilibrium position which is obviously uncomfortable and also inconvenient so then i want to talk about the uses of resonance so how can we use resonance we've previously only talked about like the bridge that was oscillating and all of the destructive ways of oscillations like the door swinging back and forth but actually we can use resonance in very useful ways for example musical instruments when you pluck the string of a guitar it's going to vibrate back and forth and it's going to have a nice little resonance that allows the, the sound to ring out. More importantly, we have microwave cooking. So you might have seen in lower levels of physics that microwave cooking is basically, when let's see, this is your microwave and you have all the buttons, you have food here and microwaves are basically sent to the food that makes the water molecules in the food vibrate up and down and it vibrates and it gains the energy from the microwaves, which basically allows the food to heat up. But why is it that only the water molecules will vibrate? Well, basically, the microwaves that is emitted within the microwave, um, they have a frequency. Obviously, this is the frequency of the microwave. It is equal to the natural frequency of water molecules. So remember that the natural frequency, you can calculate it using... Um, different masses, different shapes, and if the scientists went and basically tried to determine what the natural frequency of a uh, mo water molecule is, it would be equal to that of a microwave, an electromagnetic wave. And so basically that means that when you, you know, shoot these microwaves, the rest of the food molecules that's not H2O is not going to, you know, vibrate that much, but because this water molecule is going to go through resonance, it's going to vibrate at a much, much greater rate. So the water molecules vibrate and they absorb the energy from the microwave and then this gets hotter. So this spreads through the rest of the food and cooks it. And that's how microwave cooking works. And then we have magnetic resonance imaging, which is also denoted as MRI. So recall that when resonance happens, the maximum amount of energy from the you know, driving force is absorbed. So when we go through magnetic resonance imaging, let's say we have a person, um, and the person is made up of, whole, of a whole bunch of different atoms, right? Well, it's used in medicine to produce images like internal organs or um, bones, etc. It's like the x-ray of the modern age. So basically what happens is we send electromagnetic waves but we send a whole bunch of them, different frequencies, different wavelengths. There's just a whole bunch of electromagnetic waves of all kinds being shot at this person. Well, particular frequencies are absorbed by particular atomic nuclei. For example, let's say this atom, um, atom A, has the natural frequency that is equal to this one, which is wave A. And so this is going to be absorbed by this. So when we see that wave A is not being reflected at this certain spot, it means that there is an atom A right here. This is what it means by particular frequencies are absorbed by particular atomic nuclei. And so we can analyze the absorption of the radio waves to create a computer generated image. And I think that's that requires a lot of work because you have to figure out um, the reflections of every single one. You have to figure out the natural frequency of all of the different types of um, 
molecules or or cells that aren't the human body and then you have to somehow be able to analyze that using a computer so i think that that's obviously a lot of work and so i thought that was pretty cool lastly we have radio tuning circuiting which also relies on resonance so it also can be tv um you might have seen fm 98 point something um on your radio and you can basically tune it to different stations and then you get completely different radios right well how this happens is that the tune can be adjusted to resonate at the frequency of one transmitting station so for example at your car there is a whole bunch of electromagnetic waves that you obviously can't see because it's not light it's maybe things like microwave that you can't see and they're all over the place they all have slightly different frequencies and they're from all sorts of different radio stations you can adjust your system to resonate at the frequency of one of them. Let's say you want this one, because this is from maybe a, a radio station that you particularly like. Then it's going to basically resonate at this frequency only, and you're going to um, get the, the radio, I guess, from this system, this uh, station it will produce a large amplitude signal for this frequency only and since there are many different frequencies from many different radios transmitted to all of us we can definitely single this one out and then the you know oscillation is somehow going to be translated into an electrical system which is translated into our speakers and that's how we can listen to the radio so there's a whole different load of uses of resonance there are more but these are one of the more fundamental ones and so that is about it for resonance and damping with resonance. And for me, that is all for chapter 19, which is oscillations in physics. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching.